Aniston is getting almost $600,000 to spruce up Michael Tucker Park. For the first time in three weeks, rainfall returned to East Alabama today. We'll have the complete forecast details for the weekend and coming up in sports, we'll review Thursday night high school football action. EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Hello and welcome to East Alabama Now Local News for Friday, October the 6th, 2023. I'm Mike Statham. And I'm Katie Edwards. Aniston officials announced this afternoon that Governor Kay Ivey has approved a grant totaling $597,520 to pay for enhancements to the Michael Tucker Park Trailhead. That park is currently the southern end of the Chief Lodiga Trail, but the city is working on an extension that will bring it into downtown Anniston. Once completed, that project will make the Chief Lodiga Trail part of the longest paved pedestrian path in the United States. It will link the Georgia Silver, Co Silver Comet Trail to Anniston's multimodal station on 4th Street. Anniston City Planner Toby Bennington says Mike Tucker Park serves as the city's northern gateway and the grant will provide a safe and efficient parking and gathering area for park and trail users. Michael Tucker Park was named in memory of Dr. Michael Tucker, a noted Anniston physician and longtime bicycle enthusiast. Tomorrow is the first Saturday in October, and that always means Oxford Fest. This year's festival begins at 7.30 Saturday morning in downtown Oxford with the official opening ceremonies. The event will feature arts and crafts, food, games, live music, door prizes, and more. Admission is free. The festival will wrap up at 4 Saturday afternoon. An event as large as Oxford Fest always attracts a large number of people, and that means lots of traffic. Oxford police are dealing with that issue by closing off several roads in the downtown area through Saturday night. Officials say Main Street and Chakalaka Street were closed earlier today and will remain closed through the day on Saturday. Motorists are being advised to make alternate plans. When we come back, we'll have a great story about a local pumpkin patch. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop Metal Building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop Buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Each October, a caravan of minivans, SUVs, and school buses pour onto the gravel road that leads to Bennett Farms in Heflin. When the popular pumpkin patch opened in 2010, 6,000 customers visited the family farm. Now, Bennett Farms anticipates that it will have roughly 25,000 visitors this fall. I mean, with each year, it's grown quite a bit. Um, I'd say it's grown 20, 30% each year. So uh, we've, we've been blessed with, with people that have enjoyed it and decided to come back out and see us and um, we appreciate that. There's kids that I saw that were infants when they started coming and now they're 13, 14 years old. And it's really cool to see them grow and to come and enjoy it and we try to do more stuff to kind of um, keep them coming back like the corn maze and zip lines, that sort of thing. Although Bennett Farms is referred to as a pumpkin patch, it offers a wide range of farm-friendly activities. They include a hayride, rubber duck races, homespun lessons on traditional cooking, and more. Have you, have you ever seen a chicken run around? Yes! Where's your Springer at? <laughs> Bennett Farms has become a popular field destination for elementary schools in East Alabama and West Georgia. Today, Kitty Stone Elementary School, second graders visited that farm as they do each fall. 
Missy Wagner, a Kitty Stone teacher, explains what she thinks the trip offers for her students. Here, there's a lot of kids in my class that have never even been to a pumpkin patch, and they probably will never get to go. So they get to experience all the amazing things that Bennett Farms has to offer. There are so many things that they add every single year. So even the kids that get to come every year get to see new things every year. Now in their 14th year on the farm, Jim Bennett and his wife Lexi have no plans of slowing down. When they consider the future of the farm, they see growth. So my wife, she, she asks me every year when I'm going to quit building stuff. And my answer to that's always been, when we quit growing, I'll quit building. So I've, I've got a lot of ideas as far as expansion and things even in the off season that we could offer. Um, but, uh, but time will tell. We, we're going to try to keep growing and, and keep expanding to, to help the people that do come out year to year enjoy it and see, see the change. And when we come back, summer leaves and that brings autumn leaves. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Leaf season is just around the corner and the city of Anniston has introduced a new system for homeowners to have their leaves picked up quickly. Starting this week, Anniston residents can place a work order either online or by telephone to have their bagged leaves removed from their yards. Once the work order is placed, city crews will pick up those bags of leaves within one week. This offer applies exclusively to bagged leaves and not to loose leaves or leaf piles. All submitted work orders will be forwarded to a city staff through email, and residents can also place work orders by phone at 256-231-7742. That's Monday through Friday between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. Meanwhile, the city will continue to use its vacuum truck to pick up loose leaves from yards around the city, but that process is slower. As a result, the city's leaf team may work in the same area for multiple weeks before moving on to the next part of town. So Katie, in your yard, do you have any leaves falling already? Uh, you know, we actually do have some leaves along with some remnants of toilet paper from when we were rolled during junior senior week up in Jacksonville. So yes, we do have a few. What about you? Uh, no, not much. It's been kind of quiet so far. So far. But it's coming. Yes, we all know there's going to be a day when all of a sudden the leaves just fall and where did they go? I wonder what day that will be. You think John Holder might be able to tell us? I think he may. John Holder joins us now in the EAN Weather Center. John? Mike and Katie, the leaves in fact are already turning. I was out and about today across East Alabama and the fall color is beginning. We'll have the complete weekend forecast which includes some great fall weather next. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. Well, with all the clouds and, yes, rainfall actually today across East Alabama, temperatures were actually below normal. 78 for the high today, just a degree below the average. 64 for the low this morning. All the clouds kind of helped keep the heat in and worked as an insulator, so temperatures well above average this morning. Record high temperature 96, the record low 37. The sun rising tomorrow at 642. And look at that sunset time, the sun setting tonight very early now at 621. Weather on your street for a Friday night. Clydesdale Avenue out in West Anniston. It's going to be cloudy and cool tonight. Temperatures are going to fall throughout the night as the fall weather comes pouring in behind this cold front. 
actually winding up at 52 tomorrow morning. Saturday, the first real day of Saturday. I know fall has been here for a couple of weeks, but this is it coming up tomorrow. Much cooler weather. Little John Road in Pleasant Valley. Very nice. If you've been waiting on fall weather, here it is. 68 for the high tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine, breezy conditions. A perfect Fall Saturday coming up in Pleasant Valley and all across Calhoun and Cleburne counties. And as we look ahead to next week, we can tell you that temperatures are going to be rebounding. They'll be on the rise out on Bynum Boulevard in Bynum. We go from upper 60s this weekend to upper 70s by the middle part of next week. And yes, we're not done with the 80s. We're probably going to see some 80 degree temperatures returning back to East Alabama for next week. But uh, all in all, a pretty good forecast coming up in Bynum and all across the rest of East Alabama. The seven day forecast, not too bad. Had a little bit of rain today, not much, but we're going to go dry once again for the weekend and the early part of next week. You see that 80 degree temperature coming back in the forecast. Wouldn't be surprised if we hit 80 on Tuesday as well. Look at these nighttime lows. This is the big story in the next seven days. 42 degrees, folks, that's cold coming up on Sunday morning. 45 for Columbus Day on Monday morning. Then we're back into the 50s for nighttime lows. But maybe the biggest story of all, not a guarantee, but it looks like by next Thursday and Friday, we could actually have not only a little bit of rainfall, but some beneficial rainfall, maybe breaking the drought in earnest. 30% chance of showers on Thursday. By Friday, a 50-50 chance of rain. And I think these numbers may go a little bit higher than conserv conservative, but I think we're going to see some beneficial rainfall coming in about a week across East Alabama. And we've been talking about the rainfall that we had today. That rainfall is going to continue tonight across East Alabama. Not a big chance of rain tonight, 20 to 30 percent chance. Not going to spoil homecoming activities or high school football tonight, but there might be a little bit of light rain like we've had today. Temperature is really going to cool down after midnight. 52 you see in Anniston, 49 in Gadsden. Some of the normally colder locations across, across Calhoun and Cleburne counties could be in the upper 40s by tomorrow morning as that front comes through way after the high school football games are over and done with. Coming up next in sports, we're going to talk Donahoe High School football as EAN Local News continues. Ted's Floors and Beyond is excited to introduce our all new outdoor living collection. Have you ever dreamed of elevating or even creating an outdoor living space? Whether it be for grilling, lounging, playing, entertaining, or just winding down, our quality tile and stone combined with our expert craftsmanship will no doubt create unforgettable outdoor moments with family and friends while also enhancing the beauty and value of your home. Call us today. John Holder back with you with EAN Sports on a Friday evening. Let's take you back to high school football beginning last night. This was up at 10th Street Mountain at Donahoe. The Donahoe Varsity Cheerleaders having cheer camp this week with the little girls from the lower school. And so after learning the cheer for three days, these young ladies on the field at Lentz Field at halftime last night with the varsity. There's the head coach of the Donahoe Falcons, Jeremy Satchel. We get to game action. Falcons taking on Winterboro. Things not going well for Donahoe early. A blocked punt by the Bulldogs. That is going to result in a touchdown. Then on the next possession, fourth and one, that's going to be Smoot. And you're going to hear that name a whole lot. Deontay Smoot with a fourth down run on a fake punt for a touchdown. Then he has a 13-yard run. Then the quarterback. This is Kenneth Simmons with a 22-yard pass from Carter Castleberry setting up this fourth down and 10 at the Donahoe 20 and Zach Cater with the interception at the goal line by the Falcons to thwart the drive. Kyle Cookler comes back. The punting game a big issue last night for Donahoe. Only a 14-yard punt here. That set up the Bulldogs at the 22-yard line. And here's Mr. Smoot again with a seven-yard touchdown run. A two-point conversion run was good, and it was 14 to nothing. Here's Kleckler again. Big play for Donahoe. A 46-yard run. That sets up a fourth down and 18 now for Donahoe at the Winterboro 26. Marcus Waller, a 24-yard pass from Kleckler all the way down first and goal with the two. Kleckler with a two-yard touchdown run. The PAT was no good, but Donahoe cuts the Winterboro lead down to 14 to 6. But Donahoe on the receiving end right here of a big pass play as Castleberry throws it to Brian Waits, 56 yards all the way down to the Donahoe one.
The next play, Mr. Trust with a one-yard touchdown run for Winneboro. Two-point conversion was good. It was 22 to six. Here's Waller again. Another connection, a 29-yard pass from Kleckler. Skyler Mansfield, head coach at Winneboro, wants to know what's going on. What's the problem? No problem. Just hand it to Mr. Smoot again. Smoot breaks loose for a 51-yard touchdown run through the heart of the Donahoe defense. That made it 28 to six at halftime, and that held up all the way to the end of the game as the Falcons fall to Winterboro last night, 47 to six. That was the beginning of a big week of high school football across East Alabama, that one game tonight. More games tonight involving teams in East Alabama and Calhoun and Cleburne counties, Westbrook at Piedmont, Talladega at White Plains, Pell City at Oxford, Childersburg at Welburn, Anniston goes to Roanoke to take on Hanley, Randolph County visits Sachs, Geraldine on the Creek Bank at Ohatchee where they'll name the stadium for Reagan Clark tonight, St. Clair County at Alexandria, Cleburne County at Jacksonville, Success Academy out of Montgomery visits JCA, Pleasant Valley will be at Locust Fork, Ranburn at Vincent and the Weaver Bearcats have an open date coming up tonight. And it's not just football going on, it is also volleyball time across East Alabama. Tomorrow is the Calhoun County Volleyball Tournament at Walter Welburn High School. All gets underway with first round matches at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock Piedmont and Welburn, Jacksonville White Plains, Saxon JCA. Then at 10 o'clock, it's Donahoe against the Saxon JCA winner, Faith Christian against Weaver, and Ohatchee gets the winner of Piedmont and Welburn. And it rolls all day long with the championships coming up on Monday night at 7 on the campus of Jackson State University at Pete Matthews Coliseum. Hope you have a good football Friday night. That's going to do it for EA in Sports. Right now, back to Mike and Katie. Thanks for those updates, John, and thank you for watching today. You can find us here online every weekday evening on either Facebook or YouTube and on our website, EastAlabamaNow.com. Just go to our video feed and watch us whenever it's convenient for you. We hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you back here Monday for your news on your schedule.